This is a production of the Gold Arrow Podcast Network. Hello, and welcome to the Gold Arrow Camp Podcast, a podcast for friends of Gold Arrow Camp. Throughout the year, we join you to bring your day some of what makes Gold Arrow special. Our goal is to help you have fun, make friends, and grow throughout the year, not just when you're at camp. Since we can't get together in real life, we gather here around the virtual campfire. We have some of your favorite parts of morning assembly, like joke of the day. We also have interviews with experienced campers and some of your favorite counselors and staff members. We think it's a lot of fun, and we're glad you joined us here on the podcast. This is episode 59, where we're joined by one of my favorite people at camp. There's no one I'd rather share an office with than Chelster. It's so much fun to be talking to the year-round staff at Gold Arrow Camp on the podcast this year. If you haven't already listened, you can go back and check out the interviews I've already done with Cheerio, who's a year-round assistant director, and with Sunshine, who is our chief visionary officer. Both of those are available wherever you got this podcast, and both of those were really great shows that I really enjoyed. Today, we have Chelster on the show, and she was amazing. If you're new to Gold Arrow Camp, Chelster is your main point of contact, but she's so much more than that. Chelster's a walking history book about camp. She's also one of the nicest human beings on the planet. So here it is, my chat with Chelster. Oh, welcome to the podcast, Chelster. What's up, Chelster? Hi, how are you, Soy? Ah, I'm so good since we get to talk to each other. It makes my whole day better. I know, right? It is. Awesome. Uh, so let's get started with like the basics. This is mm-hmm. hard to believe for anybody who knows anything about camp, but there are some people yes. who might not know who you are and what you do for camp. So could right. you start by kind of telling us who you are and what you do for camp? Absolutely. So Again, I'm Chelster. Um, I've been at camp, I think this will be my 32nd year at camp. Holy moly. It's hard it's to believe because you're, you're only 35, so that's I really know, wild. I know. I started as a wee little child. <laughs> and um, so my uh, role at camp is I'm the um, director of camper and parent services. And I really focus on our first year families and making sure that our campers and our parents have a great camp experience, whether it's their first year or t- their 10th year at camp. So I focus a lot on that. So what that looks like heading into camp is like mm-hmm. you're you're probably talking on the phone or video conferences with first year parents. Absolutely. What, what does that look like during camp? Because like a mm-hmm. little behind the scenes action, you and I work in the same office at camp. Yes. Uh, so yes. what does what are you doing during the summer at camp? So during the summer at camp, um, for example, if a first year parent calls and is just wondering how their child's doing at camp, I will go and check in with the counselors. I will check in with a camper if necessary and really find out how they're doing and then give the parent a call back just to reassure them, let them know how they're settling into camp. Um, For other parents who are seasoned at camp but are just um, wondering how things are going, perhaps um, something happened right before the summer and they want to check in and make sure that their child is acclimating well um, at camp. And so I will talk with parents about that as well. That's awesome. So like you said, 32 years, which is a tremendously (laughs) long amount of time. (laughs) Yes, it is. At one it's almost place. hard to say out loud. <laughs> I know. So can you tell us a little bit of like your history and like how you came to be at camp? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my history starts pretty far back and that my parents met at Gold Arrow in the 60s. Uh, they were on staff and, um, and they both worked at camp for five years. And a lot of their best friends, even to this day, are um, people they met at camp, which is pretty amazing. That's so cool. And I know. Isn't that great? And then um, I was a camper one summer when I was nine in the early 80s. And uh, it was great. I loved it. I was at camp for a month. I can remember the cabin I was in. Um, I can remember driving motorboats and doing different <laughs> things. So it was um, really cool, really long time ago. And then in college, I thought, heck, I'll try working at camp. My parents did that as a summer job when they were in college. So I'll give it a try. And uh, it turned into every summer working at camp. And then <laughs> after I graduated from college and was out in the real world for a little bit, decided that probably wasn't for me um, and really <laughs> wanted to get back to camp and was fortunate enough to work full time for camp. And my kids have grown up going to camp as well. So it's been great. 
yeah so i think this is an interesting kind of thing because you have like a really long view of camp like you were there (laughs) kind of not kind of you were there at the beginning with that transition into kind of sunshine and monkey and we we talked Mm -hmm. with sunshine about like what it was like when she came in and was starting to run camp Mm -hmm. and i asked her this i think i want to hear from you as well over that time some things have stayed really the same Yes. Like there, you could come back and you were a camper in the 50s and there are certain things where you're going to be like, yes, that's exactly like it used to be. Yes. And some things would be unrecognizable. Correct. So I'm interested in hearing what are the big, the biggest changes that you've seen in your time at camp? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I would say uh, the activities have changed mm-hmm. a bit. I mean, there's some that have stayed around for a very long time. Obviously equipment has been updated, luckily, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> since those days. Um, but for example, when I was a camper, we had gymnastics. Wow. Uh, we no longer have that, no. I know. And, um, you know, we had, uh, that's when um, uh, wakeboarding was just starting out. Oh, and it yeah. was, yeah, <laughs> it was, I remember it really ba- um, pretty well in that it was a, it looked like a banana and it had two foot straps okay. on the banana. Sure. And then you would try to get up and it was very buoyant. So it was very hard to get up and only maybe three or four people every summer would be able to uh, wakeboard. And that was before it was called wakeboarding. I have no idea what it was called, but it was a pretty funny looking um, item. Um, also, uh, kneeboarding was called hydro sliding. Oh, that's almost yes. a better name. Hydro is a great name. <laughs> I know. And, and that, again, was this really hard plastic, very buoyant, hurt your knees, no yeah. padding, bare basics. Um, but some things that are exactly the same, sailing, exactly the same, which I love. Yeah. Um, motor boating, very much the same. The outdoors um, for nature and backpacking, very much the same. Um so, a lo- you know, in the campfire, the importance of campfire and time around campfire, yeah. that hasn't changed. We always have done that and we always will do that. Um, so, which is, I think, really important and special. I agree. I, I've talked at great length about my favorite thing that we do is campfire. Everything yes. else to me is right. like secondary yeah. to that. Yeah. So you've seen all these changes in program. The place has stayed the same. The basic mm-hmm. philosophy has stayed the same. Yes why keep coming back was like 30 years not enough was 15 not enough I um that is a good I don't think I've been asked that um I think part of it is that I see the value of what camp brings kids sure and especially um in the last 15 years where devices and mm. kids being plugged in all the time sure. has really um been detrimental I think to kids and the pressures that kids face with getting into college and their grades and they have to be in four sports and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and all sorts of things and really can't be in that place where they can um, just relax and be a kid and get dirty and be okay with it and be uncomfortable if, you know, their favorite thing's not being served at a meal <laughs> and that's okay and we'll help them navigate through that. Um, and then partly because my kids, um, were able to grow up in that environment and I see a lot of the benefits that they've, um, captured from their time at Gold Arrow. And, uh, you know, my husband holds down the fort and the dogs during the summer, but he realizes (laughs) the, the sacrifices, but as well as the, um, special moments and he comes up and visits and yeah, I think that was going to be my next question. So I'm glad you talked about it. So you have a couple kids. And both of them have been campers for basically their entire lives. Correct. And for long stints, it's not like they came for two weeks. Like they often spent the whole (laughs) summer with us at camp. Right. What as a parent, like obviously you see things kind of behind the scenes and you know Mm -hmm. kind of how hard the duck is paddling. But as a parent, what impacts have you seen on your kids with camp? Um, I think with my daughter, especially, she just started her first year 
at uh, college, and I think she jumped in with both feet. Yeah. Um, and her transition was seamless, from what I can tell. And she was a joiner. She made friends. She, you know, got right in there. She joined the sailing team, the water skiing team. Hmm. Um, met up with people for study groups and wasn't afraid to talk to people and meet new friends. And, and yep. I think that the camp has a lot to do with that Okay. Um, because each summer she had to meet new friends, each session yep. she had to meet new friends. And she of my two children were, was the camper who was in a cabin since she was five or six <laughs> for several weeks at a time and, and thrived in that environment. And I think that really helped her navigate college and high school and all of those great things. Um, for my son, I think kindness mm. and um, uh, empathy and uh, work ethic sure. uh, were things that he learned at camp. And it's a, it's a bit different. They're two different yeah, kids entirely. Yeah. Um, you know, Elliot enjoyed his time. Um, in a cabin, but he also in time enjoyed his time away from the cabin, right. um, and benefited from both sure. from both times um, during the summer. So, but he came away with a lot of great stuff as well. When you look back or look at camp currently, what's your mm -hmm. absolute favorite thing at camp? We talked about campfires already, so you could say that if you wanted, yes. but that feels like that would be cheating. Is it campfires? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's no, your second not. favorite? I thing? mean, that is a favorite, but I'm not going <laughs> to cheat, and I'm going to think of a different one. Uh, actually, I have a couple different times, and they're not during times where things are scheduled. Mm. It's um, during right before breakfast when kids are starting to arrive. I like to sit um, right outside my office on the steps, as you know, and uh, drink some coffee and just watch the interactions between the counselors and the campers, the campers to the campers, the campers with Henry the dog. <laughs> and those interactions are just, they're priceless. And you really can learn a lot about what's happening and get, you know, kind of the, the energy of camp and what's happening. Yeah. And then the same thing happens if I'm fortunate enough to be in um, the central area chipmunk um, right after evening program before campfires begin. Yes. So when we're passing out marshmallows and popcorn and kids are getting back to their cabins, but they're having one last conversation with their friend and chipmunk before they head back to their cabin or they forgot their towel and at the waterfront. So their buddy offers to help them go down to the waterfront to retrieve it or, you know, just different yeah. things that happen during those in-between moments that are unscheduled and kids are talking to each other eye to eye. They're helping each other and they're um, learning, you know, yeah. wh whether they know it or not. No, I'm right there with you. I love the, the great advantage for us at camp as directors is that on the one hand, you're like a celebrity. Everybody knows who you are, which is nice for my ego. Well, more so you, but yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but it feels good when everyone knows who you are. But the flip yeah. side is because you're like always around, you're also kind of just like part of the furniture. If you or I is standing outside the dining porch, like kids truck by and it's not like I'm anything special. Like I'm just a guy who's always around. So you really get to observe kids in their natural environment, mm -hmm. which Absolutely. I love because I think when we interact with kids in a place away from camp where the world is not kid centric, right? Mm -hmm. I think they interact, um, not that they put a mask on, but kids interact with adults in a certain way. And Correct. because they always see adults, you don't get to watch them really as they exist. Mm -hmm. But when you're a part right. of the furniture, like we are, and I can just, <laughs> I can sit by Chipmunk's campfire ring and just watch kids for 25 minutes. I, right. I am in effect not there for them mentally. And so you can see how they really interact. And for me, that's always a source of great joy and hopefulness because like right. the, the kids are amazing. Like, yes. I just want to like send an email to every parent, <laughs> like during the sessions, be right. like, I can't explain this to you and you'll never see it. And my words won't work, but your kids are awesome. And they're like, yes, they are naturally kind and they are naturally inquisitive yes. and they are naturally mm -hmm. adventurous 
And when you put them in a setting where you strip away all of the other expectations and you just say to them, and we do on the first night, we say very openly, even to our, you know, our campers who are in high school, we say, listen, you got, mm-hmm. you got two weeks and you get the rest of your life to be a grown up. So be a kid for two weeks. Mm-hmm. And I, they really embrace that. And then, like oh, you said, yeah. we get to sit on the sides and watch it. And that's so mm-hmm. much fun for me. Yeah. I totally agree. And uh, and I think, you know, when you hear testimonials from our campers, our junior counselors, our teens, when they really um, are able to um, verbalize or, mm-hmm. you know, write down their thoughts and say that that's what they appreciate about camp, yeah. that they can just be who they want to be. They can be free. They can um, – uh, there's no – you know, they can just be a kid. And, and I think that's so important. And um, – I'm glad glad they are able to reflect back on that, that that's important and that they are able to do that while they're at camp. You know, in a bit of synergy, it's so important that we decided the theme this year was just to be you. And people can check that out on our website. (laughs) Exactly. We're we're smarter than we sound, (laughs) Shelster. You also mentioned (laughs) uh, your daughter and now she's old enough. She's away at school, which means Mm -hmm. she's worked at camp. She worked for us a little bit last summer. She's coming back this summer. Cadavy yes. is back. And yes, so I'm interested because I'm on the other end of that. I've got a camper who was in a cabin for the first time last year. Right. So what's it like to work with your kid at a place where you've worked with your parents? Yeah, that, I, yeah, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to give her um, enough breathing room sure. for her to be – I want her to have this experience, not – an experience because she's my kid Mm -hmm. and now she's on staff, but her own experience um, aside from that. And I think um, with her personality, she will. Yeah. And she's on the sailing dock. She's really, really excited. Um, She loves camp and is excited to get that same experience back to, to campers. Um, So, yeah, I think the important thing is just letting her be her and make her own decisions and um, and I think it'll be great. I agree. I mean, she was great last summer. She'll be great again this summer. We talked very early in the show, and I wanted to kind of circle back around to it. You talk to a, a tremendous number of first-year parents, mm-hmm. and, and many of those parents are understandably nervous. Like, I get it. You're sending your kid yeah. away. And, like, I run a summer camp and am <laughs> nervous when I send my daughter away to, right. to people I know. Like yeah. I know other people and it, 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 there's anxiety there. So absolutely. if you had to boil down the advice you give to mm-hmm. first year parents, what would that advice be in like one kind of golden nugget of knowledge? I would say that it's important to validate your child's feelings. Absolutely. That it's normal uh, for them to uh, be thinking about and be homesick while they're away. And that's okay. And it's okay to be uncomfortable. And we will do everything we can to make them feel comfortable at camp. Of course. And to help them and navigate along the way. Um, An important thing is not to tell your child that if you are homesick, if you are missing home, if, 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 we'll come and pick you up. Yeah, that's a, that doesn't work. That never works because if they're not being served with, you know, their favorite meal for dinner one night, all they're going to think about is their parent telling them that they'll come pick them up early. And then it's harder for us at camp to help them work through it. Because in all of my years at camp, I think maybe four campers have gone home due to homesickness. And those four campers went home because parents said, made the deal with them, Mm -hmm. made the, we'll pick you up deal. And so it makes it really hard um, for us. So validate those feelings. Let them know you support them. Please don't tell them how much you're going to miss them as a parent right. um, because that makes them feel bad. Even if they're not feeling homesick or they're they're super excited and independent and ready to go, if they think they're letting you down by being away from them and you're going to miss them too much, then that's going to really um, be a be difficult for them. Yeah, because then they feel like almost guilty having fun. Yes. I can't believe I'm yes. having fun. Mom and dad are so sad at yes. home. Yes. When so tell them you're at home, home cleaning going closets. out to dinner, watching yeah, movies. No. Right. 
Yeah. Tell them you're cleaning closets, you're doing your taxes, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you need to tell them it. that, you know, even if you're going away, that's okay. Yeah. Just, um, you know, let them know in the in-between times you're uh, doing those boring that's tasks. so boring when you're not home. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, Chelster. All right. It's time for the speed round. Five questions we ask. Absolutely. Oh, goodness. comes on the podcast. Okay. Here they come. Chelster, all yes. your experience at camp, what's your favorite camp song? Cannibal King. Oh, it's quick with the answer. Favorite item on the salad bar? Oh, my gosh. Uh, artichoke hearts. Oh, you thought about it, but you came up with a very good answer. <laughs> yes. Favorite lip balm flavor? Uh, mint. Monkey's, Monkey's Mountain, Mountain Mint. Mint. Yep. Around yep, the campfire yep, at yep. night, we know it's your favorite time. It's my favorite time. Mallows or popcorn? Always mallows. Always mallows. And oh, yes. finally, Chelster, what's your real yes. name? It's Oh, no, Chelsea. we're all out of time. It took <laughs> us three years, but we'll have you back on the podcast sooner than that next time. Thanks so much for coming on, Chelster. Thank you. Appreciate it. In a world with far too much seriousness, far too much drama, we bring you something different. The joke of the cast. Do you guys know what one wall said to the other? I'll meet you at the corner. <laughs> uh, I liked that one. Friends, you know we like to end the show with a gaspiration, and that's what we have here. This one comes from James Keller. Some words of wisdom about helping one another in times of trouble. Mr. Keller reminds us that a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. Friends, that's the thought we're going to close this week's GAC podcast on. Thank you so much for listening. I'm glad you did. If you like the podcast, please share it with somebody, rate it and review it wherever you get podcasts so people can find it. We'd love to share the world of GAC with people outside of GAC. Thanks to Chelster for coming on the show. I really appreciate that. I'm sorry, and I'll save a marshmallow for you. 